Okay guys, we are talking about the pulmonology physiology and this is the pneumothorax. So, we are not doing the treatment of the pneumothorax, it is not step 2 lecture. What we are doing is we are doing pneumothorax and the mechanism of the pneumothorax. So, let us look at it quickly. Uh, here is what happens in the normal chest. So, let us say if I make two lungs here. and we make trachea and the bronchi, we know that the lungs are covered. How do we know that? We just did that in our other lectures that lungs are covered with two type of pleura. One is the visceral pleura that is what I am drawing in this green. This visceral pleura is stuck it is stuck to the to the lungs it is almost part of the ex, the lungs external surface and then is the parietal pleura that is not connected with the lungs instead lungs are sort of floating in it freely and the parietal pleura parietal pleura is then connected with the chest wall. So, this is the ribs, these are the ribs right and the ribs are connected with the parietal pleura, the whole chest wall is connected with the parietal pleura and that chest wall keeps the parietal pleura moved you know pulled outwards. So, the, the cavity between the visceral and parietal pleura is the pleural cavity. So, today's story, today's problem, today's topic is about this cavity. So, normally what happens is the pleural cavity, it has a small suction effect because of the lymphatics. I always make that as a small faucet like structure. So, this is the parietal pleural cavity pleural cavity has normally a pressure of minus 5 centimeter of water right. So, that is a normal situation. Now, lungs are pulled out because of this minus centimeter. So, what happens is chest cavity pulls the parietal pleura out, parietal pleura exerts pressure on the fluid in this here and tries to suck the fluid outwards. Fluid is then causing a suction effect on the visceral pleura. Visceral pleura is tightly bound to the lungs. So, the lungs are pulled out. That is how the outward pull happens and that is why there is minus 70, minus 5 centimeter of water pressure. Now, imagine this for a second before we talk about pneumothorax. Imagine this for a second. If this suction effect is taken away. If this outward pull is taken away, then the lungs have a tendency to collapse, right? We did that in our previous lectures. What contributes to that tendency to collapse? We know that there is the fluid air interface problem or surface tension generated by that. And secondly, there is the surface tension generated by elastin and collagen fibers that are trying to, that are trying to recoil. So, if you somehow remove the forces out here that are pulling the lungs open, then the forces that are moving, that are pulling the lungs inwards, recoil forces will win and the lungs would shrink and collapse. So, this is the recoil forces. Recoil forces, we have talked about it. One third is the tissue, elastin and fibrin. Two third of the forces are the the fluid present in alveoli, fluid in alveoli. We, alveoli, we have done this in detail, so I do not want to waste your time. Here is what pneumothorax is. Pneumothorax means air in the chest cavity, but really it is more than the air in the chest cavity. What it is, is the air in the pleural cavity that matters. 
So if you inject a little bit of an air in my chest cavity, that's okay, I can handle that. But if you somehow open up the pleura, now which pleura? You can open up visceral pleura or you can damage the parietal pleura. So let's say for our purposes, today at this time, let's damage the parietal pleura. How do we damage that? Maybe there is a stab injury or maybe the the patient wa was involved in a, in a motor vehicle accident. He was in a car and the car had an accident and he had a chest trauma. Or maybe this was a surgical mistake, you know, a mi mistake during the surgery. So there can be so many reasons that ultimately can cause the parietal pleura to become ruptured. When it becomes ruptured, what will happen? Guys, atmospheric pressure, atmospheric pressure is usually, usually parietal, the pleural space is sub-atmospheric. That is how it pulls the lungs out. Now all of a sudden, atmosphere or the gases or the air from the environment has a chance to go into the pleural cavity. I keep saying pleural cavity, don't forget that. Once the air goes in there, do you think that the lungs are now being pulled out? No. Lungs have become disconnected in this whole system. They were floating in here and they were just sucked outwards. All of a sudden, that lung over here have become disconnected. Why? Because the air has come in. When the air starts filling, so let's say this is air. When air starts filling this area, nobody is now pulling the lungs out. When the chest cavity wants to spring outwards, the air just goes in. And so parietal pleura just expands. However, where does the lung want to go? Lung wants to go inward. Lung wants to recoil. Lung, lung wants to collapse. So the result of that is that lungs would start collapsing. So if I make that over here in the chest cavity, so if this is the chest cavity, and if these were the lungs, when there is a damage to the parietal pleura and there is a valve open, there is an opening, then that side lung can actually become really compressed. And when the lung becomes compressed, what is the rest of this space filled with? It is filled with air and it is connected with the outside. Right? So that is the pneumothorax. It can be of two types. So I have to do tension pneumothorax in a second. It can be of two types, normal and tension. Normal neurothorax or simple neurothorax, pneumothorax is where the, the opening, the injury is so much that with the inspiration and expiration, the, the chest expands and the air goes in and chest compresses and the air goes out. Just a simple straight shunt is available here. Now this also causes the shunting from shunting I remember, the, this is also going to, this lung is going to act as a shunt. What does that mean? Blood can come in there without any gaseous exchange. So blood will be shunted away without gaseous exchanges. Now here the air is going in and out, this is called the simple pneumothorax. However, now pay attention to this one, however, if, if, so let's say, This is the lung here and this is the parietal pleura, black one is parietal pleura. Either the lung ruptures, let's say here at the apex there is a rupture of the lung, how can that be done? Positive pressure ventilation can cause the lung damage and puncture the lung. Positive and expiratory pressure has even greater chance of creating a puncture in the lung, especially on the apices. And that would cause every time now that the machine, so this is the machine, right? So this machine, every time the machine is going to pump the air in, the air is going to go out and collect here. But why is it tension pneumothorax? It is tension pneumothorax because this thing is a valve. The opening is a valve-like opening. So when the air pushes it, the valve opens up, air goes out. 
but when air wants to go back in the valve closes injury is such that it becomes a valvular mechanism either outside or from inside from outside what would happen is parietal pleura is damaged in a way that when the air goes in this valve kind of opens up but when air tries to get back out this valve closes it the flaps close so air cannot escape but can come in so now with every breathing cycle more and more air would continue to come in so the patient would start with a fully inflated lung and as the puncture develops with every breathing cycle the air would start increasing and the lung would start slowly compressing the problem here is slightly different from the simple one and that is simple one collapses and done here collapse and done is not enough what will happen is after the collapse after the collapse even then the air would continue to move in because it cannot go out and the breathing cycle is happening so air would continue to move in so what would happen is lung is collapsed so let's say this tiny little thing here this is lung it is collapsed this is the other lung so this lung is collapsed however the air that is moving in continues to move in or move out and continues to fill this cavity what would that do as we continue to breathe this cavity would continue to push the other viscerals on the side so the trachea will be pulled so let's say if the pneumothorax is on this way the trachea would start deviating away from the pneumothorax heart will be pushed away and not only pushed away it will be compressed venous return can be compromised the cardiac output can be compromised and this can become a fatal situation this is why it is important it is an emergency to quickly relieve the tension pneumothorax by doing a valve you know thoracotomy so this is what the tension pneumothorax is important thing is that the air continues to develop in the continues to go in the pleural cavity and just keeps expanding inside the chest cavity and the chest cavity has a limited space and it has other critical viscerals in there it cannot just continue to expand so that is the tension pneumothorax and the simple pneumothorax thank you very much